Welcome to a new curve blog. All about franchise establishment versus reimagining on my life. Shut up, Kazoo. Me, I didn't I tell you you do the backing track. Um, so I don't know how long this one is going to go for. I just I was inspired and was thinking about this uh, this particular subject, and then I remembered that I had a question tucked away about it, and figured like, eh, you know, while well, I'm kind of you know, I'm mulling this over on my head. I might as well just, you know, in spur of the moment record this. So I don't know when this is going to come out. Uh, this is before or after any of the recent topics that I've been releasing. But nonetheless, uh, so this is, um, th this was, this was, this was a question submitted. To, I can't even remember how long ago, actually, uh, or, you know, from what video. But um, I was I was thinking about this and pulled this question. This is from uh, Cyan Crimson Wind. Okay, I've got a good one for you. How do you feel about the massive series of reboots, sequels, and continuations that 90s and early 2000s series are getting lately? Astro Boy, Dragon Ball Super, Digimon Adventure Try, the Yu-Gi-Oh! movie on the way, just to name a few. Seems like these kind of productions are dominating the industry right now. Uh, that is true. And um, it, it's, it's kind of interesting because uh, this is actually something that I guess not talked about in depth, but but often does come up uh, in discussion as just kind of like, you know, just offhandedly between uh, myself and Steve Yurko, uh, who, of course, has been on uh, Curve Logs a few times before with Mike Lucas. Um, it, it's it's interesting that in the last like several, several, several years, uh, this has been a, a major uh, thing that's happened. And, and actually, I'll even say this to start with. Um, as, a, as a subject separately from this in the future that I would really like to do, um, I want to do like a, a topic specifically about the feeling of nostalgia and like, like how valid that is in terms of like the quality of, of media. Um, but that, that's a whole other kind of subject in and of itself. So I'm not going to, I'm going to, I'm going to preface by saying I'm not going to talk about that aspect of it too much. Um, but, but that is something that I do want to get a little bit more in depth, uh, with a particular guest, uh, if, if I can get them as well. Uh, but yeah, so that aside. Um, what's kind of interesting to me about this, and especially with the examples that, that you've suggested here are for this topic, um, I think that there is, as the uh, theme song also kind of implied, um, I think that there's a big difference between uh, a reboot, reimagining, you know, kind of popping up out of nowhere <coughs> um, with that and, uh, and also a franchise already being established. Uh, and kind of the different areas, like the, like the gray areas sort of in between and everything. Um, as far as the specific examples that you, you mentioned, I'll even go into those to start with. Um, so, uh, so Dragon Ball, Digimon, and Yu-Gi-Oh, for instance. Um, so with Dragon Ball, I mean, obviously I've talked extensively about Dragon Ball stuff on, on here for a long time. <laughs> but um, Dragon Ball is, it's interesting, especially with its presence in the U.S., because... So in Japan, Dragon Ball kind of like, you know, was was like in the background for a few years. Uh, and then it had a big resurgence with, you know, new merchandise and video games uh, in kind of the early 2000s when the first Budokai game came out. Uh, but for over here in the U.S., uh, things just kind of kept continuing. And, you know, like by the time that the show was ending on Cartoon Network, you know, we jumped right into doing GT. We were still finishing up the original Dragon Ball. Uh, you know, we were doing the video games every year, you know, so like for us, it, it, the, the franchise never really necessarily went away. Um, and, and now a lot of people today would say it made a big comeback in the form of, uh, of the movies, or even in a way, I would even say with Dragon Ball Kai, because I think Dragon Ball Kai in particular, uh, when that was airing on, on Nicktoon, specifically like it, it, its first time being in the U.S., uh, it brought it back in a big way over here. In Japan, uh, from what I understand, Dragon Ball Kai didn't really do like that massively well it actually did a lot uh, better overseas in general compared to japan um but then also of course with you know the battle of gods movie and then you know eventually resurrection f and then now of course dragon ball super like a lot of people say that it, it's had like a big comeback um you know and and you know i'm gonna come back to that but then also like for instance with <coughs> digimon try and the new Yu-Gi-Oh movie uh i think kind of in tandem with with, with super in, in a little bit of a different way, uh, you know, Digimon and Yu-Gi-Oh! have continued to be, you know, very, very much present. Um, you know, they've continued to put out new series, new video games, you know, probably, I assume, new comics and merchandise and stuff. I, I don't know what specifically, but I, I would imagine that that's the case, uh, you know, for a lot of that stuff. And, um, you know, but, but specifically, I'm, I'm assuming what you're talking about is, you know, because Try is a sequel to the original first Digimon series, and then the new Yu-Gi-Oh! movie is... 
uh, continuation where the manga left off uh, for the original Yu-Gi-Oh! And it's not, uh, you know, Digimon Tri is not related to Fusion, which is the most recent one in terms of a series, a consistent series. And same thing with Yu-Gi-Oh! It's not uh, necessarily related to, um, uh, to Arc 5, which is like the new, you know, series right now. Uh, which is kind of funny because, like, Bonds Me on Time before that, which was, you know, very much a, like, well, remember the old Yu-Gi-Oh! series? Like, if anything, that was that was more of a Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds movie, and 5Ds was the most recent one that was out, and it happened to have the GX and original Yu-Gi-Oh! characters in it. Um, but uh, but with, with the, the point with all those things is, like, you know, these 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 reboots are what I think in, in the negative sense is, is people seem to perceive them as, like, just trying to, to get a cheap... It's it's a cheap ploy at like pr uh, preying on people's nostalgia for older stuff that they grew up with in the way that they remember it. Um, you know, I think I, I could even I could even see people making the same kind of argument for Pokemon Go, uh, where it's like, oh, you know, like it's specifically like catering toward. Or actually, you know what? Maybe even a better example than Pokemon Go would be Pokemon Origins, uh, which I enjoyed. By the way, I, I did like it for what it was. I I I, I disagree with a lot of people like notion a lot of people's notions about like oh it, it sh this is this is what the show should be like i disagree with that i don't think that it, that it is a replacement for the show it was very much its own separate thing and it was cool and it was enjoyable and it was well made and i liked it um but but i would also argue that in that specific case uh especially because and and, and if anything it was uh kind of you know clever i guess you could say or maybe unclever depending on who you ask but um, you know, without spoiling it too hard in case you guys haven't seen it, there is something in the, the final installment of the four episodes of it that they did that is directly tied into Pokemon X and Y, which was the new game that was coming out at the time that Pokemon Origins was released. Um, but yeah, like, th like that was specifically like, oh, remember the original Pokemon Red and Blue? Isn't that so cool? You know, et cetera. Um, like, like really selling people on that specifically. Uh, and, and that was kind of the response that I saw, uh, you know, as a result of it coming out. <laughs> uh, Pokemon Go, I think, in a way, is kind of in that same vein, and that, it, it, and that at the very least it's focusing specifically on the first 151 right now, which I think is a big reason why a lot of people that have fallen out of Pokemon are playing it, uh, which is funny because so many... I, not, I, don't, I don't want to make this into a big Pokemon Go topic, but it's funny that, like, um, you know, people who are, like, bored with like, the main Pokemon games and not really big into them anymore, which is, you know, fair enough if, if they're not into it. Um, but they even admit that Pokemon Go is, like, kind of a basic, like, whatever stupid kind of game, uh, but they still love it regardless of that. Uh, now, I know whether that actually has to do with the fact that it's, you know, it's preying on nostalgia in that way or whatever is, is up for debate, too. But, okay, so, so my, my point with, with, I guess I'll, I'll have this, uh, 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 not trifecta, but, but the quartet of Dragon Ball, Digimon, Yu-Gi-Oh!, and Pokemon. Uh, you know, big, major franchises. These franchises are firmly established, uh, you know, in, they have been consistently here, like, in the public eye in some way, uh, you know, for a very, very long time. Um, now, while, you know, the, the specific examples of the new movies and the new, you know, games, etc., that focus on, you know, the, the first generation's worth of material that, that people, you know, in my age range or whatever are remembering, um, you know, it, it, it's, it's fair to assess that those are, you know, more or less being aimed specifically towards people that are, you know, because like, because these are kids franchises. These are these are you know for kids products and toys and games and things like that. You know, typically, uh, not to say that adults can't enjoy them, and of course, obviously they do. Uh, I know plenty of people in my own age range that still enjoy the current Dragon Ball, Digimon, Pokemon, and Yu-Gi-Oh stuff. You know, right now, absolutely. But the fact that they're primarily aimed towards a younger audience and these specific things that are that are like you know reboot reimagining you know subsects within these established franchises. Are aimed specifically towards that, uh, you know, that kind of um, uh, that that age range of people within that fandom. Uh, to to answer the actual question of how do I feel about it, um, I think that it for me personally, it is a case by case basis on if I personally get any kind of value out of those things. Uh, so, for instance, I'll, I'll go to each of those you know, specific examples. Obviously, when it comes to Dragon Ball Super, you can listen to the Dragon Ball Super, you know curb blocks that I've done specifically about those, uh, you know, if you want. Um, with, uh, with the Yu-Gi-Oh! movie, I, I am interested because I would like to see, hey, this is being 
written. Actually, you know, what? and actually, I'll even say this for for both that and and Dragon Ball Super is kind of an extension example. Um, they're both like, hey, these are stories written by the original creator that are within the continuity. You know, for what that's worth, uh, you know, especially in the Dragon Ball's case, um, with what the original story was, and this this is a further expansion of that material. Um, you know, with the original creator at the helm. That in and of itself, like, legitimizes it more to me in how it's like, oh, cool, I'm curious to hear what the original person that conceived this idea would come up with, you know, even if it was urged on by the company that, like, owns the IP or whatever, you know, and, you know, they're the creator that collects the paycheck and hasn't necessarily done anything in a while, um, you know, not to say that Toriyama and, you know, Kazuki Takahashi haven't still been producing work and, you know, doing stuff, but you know what I mean. And in terms of that specific, you know, IP, um, you know, to, to see what they come up with, that is interesting to me, you know, and, and so therefore I'm, I'm interested to go see those things, whether they turn out good or not is, is a whole nother thing in and of itself. Um, when it comes to Digimon Try, for instance, like, you know, I, I did watch, uh, Digimon Adventure, you know, one and two, both seasons of that, uh, you know, kind of sporadically on and off here and there. I talked a little bit about that with Ben on, on the Digimon Curve blog that we did together, um, you know, and, and, and I enjoy them okay, but I'm not, uh, you know, super interested in watching Try because I don't have nearly the same level of attachment to, uh, to those characters. Uh, and then in the case of, of Pokemon, like I mentioned, I enjoyed Pokemon Origins for, for just what it was. Like, it was a four-episode, fun little journey. It was well animated. It was well, uh, you know, executed and, and acted and written. And it was like, okay, that was fun. I enjoyed that. I don't, I don't you know, I'm not like salivating for give me more of that this is what i need this is this is what will satiate my pokemon specific desires and you know because I've, I've been asked a couple times about this i'm not playing pokemon go not because i i think it's stupid or whatever uh i actually think it's quite brilliant on on their part uh i just i don't want to make the time commitment and i know that i'm going to play sun and moon which is what i'm more interested in is is the the new main game because in terms of the pokemon game stuff uh, you know, I'm excited about playing the next installment of the, the actual, the, or not the actual, but the, the, the typical Pokemon games. Uh, and Go is just one that I'm like, eh, I'm not interested enough to want to, like, make the time commitment for it. Even though I know, I know it's not, like, a massive time commitment, but just, you know, I, I'm, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty picky with, like, what games I, I stop and make the time for, you know, in my later years. Um, so, okay, so going back to, actually, the first example you listed on here, Astro Boy. Um, so Astro Boy, the last new thing that came from that specifically, of course, was the Studio Imagi animated movie, which I have not seen. Um, for a similar case of what I was just talking about uh, with some of the other examples, um, while I did watch the, uh, the, the mid-2000s Astro Boy series on Kids WB, and I enjoyed it, uh, I did not grow up with the original Astro Boy, and... I, you know, also was not hearing great things about the Astro Boy uh, Imagi movie anyway. I still haven't seen it, so, I, you know, obviously I can't judge for myself, but I wasn't rushing out the door to go see it. Now, on that note, I'm going to use an example specifically here, uh, and, and this is what I'm going to do. This, this is kind of the next part of the subject here that I want to bring up. I'm going to talk about Ghostbusters. Okay, so I have not seen the new Ghostbusters movie. Um, I don't know if I'm going to see it. I'm recording this, uh, actually just before July is about to end. This is probably going to, I mean, this is, this is going to come out in August. Uh, I don't know when yet, but either way, it's a time travel, whatever. I don't know if I'm going to see the, the new Ghostbusters movie. Um, so I believe at best I, I watched the original, the first Ghostbusters movie as a kid, like probably syndicated on TV in passing. The only things I remember about Ghostbusters are, like, the actors that were in it. I couldn't even tell you the, the, the characters' names, which I know is pathetic. Slimer, the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man, and I know the Zool motherfucker Zool joke because of Doug. Like, that's, that's it. Uh, so, you know, I, and while I know the original Ghostbusters is a fantastic, you know, classic movie, um, you know, I... I didn't grow up with it as a part of, you know, my nostalgic childhood, whatever, you know? So be, that, that's the reason why, even though I, you know, I've heard like mixed things about the new Ghostbusters movies. I've heard from some, like actually most of what I'm hearing now is, Hey, it was actually pretty good. It was pretty funny. And I'm not surprised by that because, you know, I know that the cast of it are all amazingly talented, really funny actresses. Uh, so I'm sure it's perfectly fine. I'm not, I'm not rushing out the door to see it, not because of the, the fucking controversy or, or whatever. I have no opinion on that whatsoever. It's just, 
I'm not super interested in Ghostbusters as a franchise, and therefore I'm, I don't really care that much about going to see the movie. If I happen to see it, if maybe like I'm at a friend's house and they're playing it on Netflix if it's on there later, or they have the DVD or something, like, sure, I, I, I wouldn't be like, oh, God, fuck this movie or whatever. I mean, I'm, I'm very rarely ever like that with movies in general. Um, but, but in terms of, like, going out of the theater to see it, I'm not rushing out to go see that. Now, um, I don't know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this. I don't know because I haven't seen the movie. I don't know if Ghostbusters, the, the new one, falls into this specific category. But this goes back to answering the actual question um, about how do I feel. Um, in terms of how do I feel about those types of reboot sequels, continuations, etc., um, is the fact, and, and actually I'm even going to out myself as an example of this because I think that this technically applies. Um, what, what, the, only, the only main thing about those types of like, like reboots, reimaginings, whatever, um, you know, within established franchises, or actually, you know what? I'll, okay, I'll say specifically for uh, franchises and, and IPs that have not had, like, you know, consistent establishment. So this is the difference between, like, say, the earlier ones of, like, you know, Pokemon, Dragon Ball, Digimon, Yu-Gi-Oh!, which have consistently been in the, the public eye in some form, even if they're not, like, you know, massively popular, like, when they first came out, or, you know, or, or if it's not, like, just in, in general as popular, you know, as, as it could be or whatever. And it's specifically, like, oh, this, like, you know, thing that's catering to the older audience and the nostalgia of the whatever, you know. The, the difference between that and what I'm talking about here is uh, something that get okay, like Ghostbusters, which is, you know, Ghostbusters was something that was not around for a really long time, except for the case of the Ghostbusters 3 mini, uh, 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 video game. Uh, which I also don't know much about it. I don't know if that was like well received or if people like that. I, I have no idea, so I can't speak on that. Uh, and again, I don't know if Ghostbusters necessarily falls into the category of what I'm talking about. Um, but in general, when something that has been like gone for a long time and it gets rebooted and it gets like a new reimagined like continuation, whether it's as a movie or a game or a comic or whatever, um, you know, the, the the part of it that is is, I guess, frustrating to me is when I see it and I don't understand who it's for. Uh, now, when I say that, um, and, and this, is, this is an inherent, I think, problem that most of these kind of things have. Uh, and sometimes this can even be the case with, um, uh, like with, with stuff like Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh! and things like that. Um, but it, it, it's, again, it's a case-by-case -case basis. But So if it's something that's not been around for a long time, <laughs> and and then and you know whether it's they have the original people involved like the original cast or like the original crew or whatever or if it's all new people working under the company that owns the IP and you know they want to put their new spin on it um the problem that often comes up is if they're using the name of something i find that 9 times out of 10 there is you know and sometimes it's it's in fact very often it's out of the hands of the creatives who are you know actually being set to make it you know, usually it's people above them being like, okay, we want you to have it be, you know, this much amount of in tribute or in line with how the original or previous incarnation of this thing is so that if people who know the name of the brand or the IP or the whatever it is uh, want to go see this new version of it and experience it, that they'll still be expecting something that is along the lines of, you know, of what that name means to them, you know? Um, so, and, and now that's fair enough, but what I think the, the double-edged sword of that mentality is then that can be limiting to if, okay, but now we can't go too far out of the scope of what, you know, was the case of the, in the, in the, uh, original or previous whatever of this, whatever, uh, that was a sentence. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, because, you know, the people above us or, or you know, the, the consumers and or how they perceive the consumers to react or whatever, we have to be wary of that. So therefore, we can't take as many liberties. We can't be probably as creative. Uh, and sometimes, granted, you know, constraints can lead to more creativity. But I think in the case of reboots, it, it can it can sometimes do more harm than good. Uh, and not always. Not that that's not a black and white, you know, blanket statement. Sorry. Um, but 
it, it makes it like it, it makes the identity of this new incarnation of whatever. And again, I'm not even talking about Ghostbusters because again, I, I don't know if I, I haven't seen it, so I don't know if it falls under this umbrella necessarily. Um, but there's other stuff that I've seen that that does, um, you know, where like I don't want to use a specific example because I don't want to I don't want to cause an issue. But okay, like when I, when I see something that that falls in line with that kind of description, right? And I check it out, and and like say I did grow up with the original, and then I'm like, oh, I'm I'm curious to see what this new one is like, and I watch it, and I'm like, okay, this this to me this comes off like. It doesn't. Okay, you probably even know what I'm talking about. I I don't even have to say what it is. And maybe maybe you guys know what I talk what I'm talking about. If you do, then good for you. If not, whatever. Either way, I'm just gonna go with the example. So I'll watch a remake of something or a reboot of something or whatever, right? That I grew up with the previous version of. It's been gone for a long time, and this is the first like new thing that they're doing with it for a very long time, right? And I look at it, and I'm like, I don't understand who this is for. I don't know if this is meant to be for me specifically, if this is like, oh, remember, blah, blah, blah. Hey, it's back and it's like new and it's like, you know, it's like today's modern hip type of sensibilities or whatever. I'm like, all right. But then at the same time, it, it, it's, it's so like, that's not what that character would do or that's like really like out of the scope of how they would act or like that just, that doesn't seem like it's along the same kind of like, you know, sense of humor is the original, or doesn't have the same quality as the original, which, I mean, you know, that, that's up to, your, you know, the individual's interpretation of what, you know, good quality is or whatever, depending, but, um, you know, like, I see that, and I'm, and I'm just, like, I mean, it's annoying, but it's also just confusing, because I'm like, I don't know if this is, if this is more, you know, it's trying to do both, you know, presumably, or at least that's what it's coming off as, but, but the confusing part is, I don't know which side it's leaning more towards. It's like, is this for a new audience that, that didn't grow up with the original version of it or whatever, and you're trying to get people into it, you know, based off of your own new interpretation of it, which that's, that's fair to do that. That's completely fair. Um, you know, because that's also like, say, for instance, um, one of my big uh, kind of defenses about the Pokemon anime, for instance, I've probably, I've probably even talked about this on, in Pokesember like a fucking year ago, is I, I actually will even say... Because um, recently, there was a clip of uh, an episode that I think just aired in Japan recently. It was a big fight scene between Ash and one of the rival characters from the X and Y series. And it's beautifully animated. And I saw that, and I was like, that's really cool. I haven't been extensively keeping up with X and Y, but I know that that show is very, very good. And a lot of people I see are like, wow, I didn't know Pokemon was so badass. What happened? And I'm like, Pokemon has been good for a very long time. You're just not watching it anymore because you're not into it. It doesn't appeal to you you're not interested and that's fine, but you're not being interested in it. And, you know, you grew up with, you know, however many seasons you watched until you were done and jumped ship or whatever. Um, you know, if anything, I, I actually say that I think that kids are very, very lucky and fortunate, uh, not in like a privileged way, like in, in like a, like, a, oh, that's really cool for them. Good for them kind of way uh, of like that they have the show the way it is now. Cause I often say like, oh, the Pokemon series is actually a lot more in depth now. There's a lot more like, recurring characters in the show that, you, that, that develop and grow and that you like get to know over the course of like the years that like, like, like say like X and Y has been going on for I think like three years now. Uh, and like, you know, there's, by the time they get to this end tournament where it's like all these characters that you've become attached to and know, and they all have like a, like a battle together. And it's like, oh, it means something as opposed to just like, hi, I'm Richie. You've known me for five seconds and now we're best butt buddies. And we're just expecting you to like have this whole emotional experience or whatever. Like, wow, great. Okay. You know, because that, that's kind of my criticism of some of the stuff that happened with the first season. Um, you know, which it's just, that's the first time they did that. So it's like, that was a lesson that was learned. And then they, they changed how they did that with each successive season. And, you know, and now the show is, I think, at a level of quality that's higher than what it is that the people like me in my age range that grew up with the first season, uh, you know, have in comparison. Um, but anyway, so... Oh, one of the other points, sorry, I almost forgot this. Uh, one of the other points that I often make kind of in tandem with that bit about the Pokemon series is that, you know, I uh, I say, okay, like, oh, no, 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 I remember. Okay, a lot of people were throwing a major shit fit about that episode, uh, and it was towards the end of Black and White, where Ash uh, was using his Pokedex on a Charmander, and all it was, this is my little mini rant about this, I've never talked about this before, fucking everybody was like, oh my god, Ash is such a dumbass, he had a Charmander. I'm like, no, because all you saw, you fucking idiots, was the gift set on Tumblr from that episode that you didn't watch, and he was like, oh my god, like, why is he using a fucking Pokedex on Charmander? And he's like, well, if you saw the episode and saw the fucking context of it, they were at a festival 
about you know, like about Canto and Ash was like, oh yeah, I know, I know all this stuff and et cetera. And he's talking to his friends from this region that, you know, doesn't know as much about Canto or whatever. He's telling them all these things. And that whole episode was about him reminiscing about his Charmander. And then they, and it was cool because actually that episode, you could even say it was like, oh, it was pandery or whatever to the season one fans or whatever. But no, it was, I mean, it was cool. I really liked it uh, where it was all these like, you know, uh, reanimated scenes from, uh, you know, not just the first season, but all throughout where Charizard was a prominent character uh, in the show. And, uh, and then ultimately ends up in Ash having Charizard come back onto the team and he joins with him for, you know, like, like a, uh, that, that, that little arc, uh, you know, the episode N arc or whatever it was called. But the thing is, a lot of people were like, oh, like, you know, why would he use his Pokedex to explain anything about this Pokemon that he already knows about? I'm like, okay, you know about it because you grew up with Generation 1 and Season 1 and you know everything about Charmander and all those characters. Totally. The kids, the kids that are watching, that are actually watching the fucking show, everybody, that wake up on Saturday morning and are excited about the new episodes and everything, that are actually watching the show, are not expected to have seen... Not only that season, but all, you know, 700, however many episodes of the show that there are by this. There might even be like over into the four digits by this point. I don't even know. But that's what I mean. Is like, I, I, or no, no, actually, another good example is that Mewtwo movie, the, the newer one where it was like Mewtwo versus Genesect. I saw that, and at first I was a little like, oh, like this isn't Mewtwo from the first movie. It's not consistent. It's, all, it's like treated like a separate character, even though it's not a separate character. It's just Mewtwo. But then I stopped like, you know what? Okay, I can't expect that all the kids 15 years later who are seeing this movie to have also just so happened to have seen Mewtwo Strikes Back. So therefore, it's like, okay, well then clearly in this context, whoever the, the, the staff is probably, or you know, I don't know, but, but very well could have been totally different staff than worked on Pokemon back then and maybe even on that specific, you know, the first movie all the way back then. We're like, okay, well, we're not expecting kids to know and have seen everything about the first Mewtwo movie and that version of Mewtwo from when we did that all the way back then. So, hey, why don't we do a new interpretation of it? Because we can go on the graces of knowing that most of the kids that are watching this don't have that information. So they did a new iteration of Mewtwo where actually, interestingly, it was uh, it, they were voiced by a woman. Uh, which I thought, oh, that that's kind of cool. Um, my my only complaint was that in one of the trailers, they were making it look like Ash recognized Mewtwo. In which case, I thought, oh, is it is this the same Mewtwo from movie one? Like, what's the deal? Um, that was my only complaint. But as far as the movie itself goes, I don't blame them for choosing to go that route. Uh, you know, because it, it it is like this is its own thing. This is just a, like a standalone experience. Is this this movie, the Mewtwo versus Genesect movie. And it's like, that's fine. That's totally cool. And I enjoyed it for what it was, having seen and loved the first Mewtwo movie, uh, which I've also talked about extensively on, um, on uh, po the Poké Semper Curve laws that I did back in the day. Anyway, going back to the point. Okay, so, but, so, so in contrast, um, you know, like, in, in that case, it's like, okay, no, I don't expect the kids to know everything about this. But when I see other examples where it's like, here's this reboot, but it's like half- we're not expecting the, the kids to have grown up with the original, so we're just using this, this legendary IP to do a new spin on it. And it's like, okay, sure, that, I, that's, you, you have the right to do that, sure. But it, it's also inherently like we're, we're reimagining this thing, you know. And, and in, if you want to spin it in like a, like a more naive or, you know, pure kind of way, but I mean, let's face it, it's not because it's corporations and executives that make these decisions to bring these things back. Uh, you know, more often than not, I find, uh, it's typically supposed to be about, hey, this is a, a an IP that has, you know, characters that people love and that, you know, are, are really, you know, iconic and we could tell like cool new stories with them, you know, or we could reinvent old stories in, in a new way or whatever, you know, and they want to bring that to, you know, uh, to, to today's generation, you know, or whatever you want to describe it as, um, but but what's laced with that, with the fact that it is already a pre-existing IP, is the fact that there is already something like inherently built into that of like, okay, so maybe the people who have already seen this will be excited to experience it in a new way. And and there is value in that because very often, even though there are a lot of people that complain about those things, there are also a lot of people, and I don't know if it's just as many or more, but there are people also in that equation that are genuinely open and interested into seeing oh how's this new okay actually great example and and this is this is a very specific kind of example 
Power Rangers, the new movie. Okay, so I grew up with Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, followed it extensively. Obviously, I did Parody Rangers, which was a big thing to show that I was obsessed with it, and it was a you know, huge part of my, my child and everything. And, you know, I've talked about this on, on the Power Rangers and, and you know, uh, Sentai Curb Lab that I did or whatever, um, in that, you know, I, I was watching, uh, you know, Zero Ranger and Mighty Morphin Power Ranger back and forth at the time with Liz. And, you know, we stopped watching Mighty Morphin Power Rangers because we weren't really liking it. It was like, wow, this really doesn't hold up as well as we thought it did. Uh, and meanwhile, Zero Ranger, which, you know, um, well, obviously that wasn't a remake. That was the original in that case. That's where Power Rangers came from. Uh, we were experiencing that as like a whole new and, and in our case, uh, rather in our perception, a, a better, uh, you know, interpretation of this material that we were kind of semi familiar with. Um, now, because of the fact that I, and again, this is, this is kind of tying in with that whole, like, uh, you know, the feeling of nostalgia thing, what I'm, and I'm glad about this is that I've learned about in my later years is that I have, I found that I have a, a pretty solid ability to, you know, for the most part, not have rose tinted glasses at things that I grew up with and thinking that they are, you know, they, they're completely, uh, you know, infallible or whatever. Like I can, I can have the, the states in between of like, Oh yeah, this still holds up. It's still got, you know, some problems or whatever, you know, it's not perfect or it could be a little stupid at times or whatever, but I still think it has a lot of genuine value to it. And also even as far as like, wow, that thing that I grew up with, like, yeah, like I can even, I can have that feeling of like, Oh, ha ha. I remember this as a kid, but wow, it's really fucking bad now that I watch it again all these years later and here, and I can say why it's bad, um, and why something's good, et cetera. Um, so on the note of the, the, the new Power Rangers movie, getting back to that, um, all I know is the the cast, the couple pictures that they've released of the suits and the Rita Repulsa redesign, um, and uh, and the descriptions of the basically the new personalities, the or rather the updated personalities of the five Rangers uh, in how they fit in with you know the plot, which is you know the plot is more or less the same basic concept of the original show where it's Zordon needs to get these teenagers to fight back against Rita Repulsa and blah, 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 et cetera, you know, with alpha five and they get discovered and they have to stop Rita. Um, like, and I, I don't even know how different it's going to be, but here's the thing with just the information, the very basic information that I have, weirdly, I'm really excited to see this new movie. And like, I, and, and strangely, I've not been off put by the new suit designs. I'm not off put by the new design for Rita, even though it's completely different. And she might be a totally different kind of character for all I know. And I think that the reason in that specific case that I'm so open and excited to see this new version also, oh, and the one other thing that I know that is making me kind of excited about it is the fact that it's people that worked on uh, some of the, the, the really good X-Men movies, uh, you know, kind of flashing back to fucking Marvel for a second. Um, but uh, yeah, so like, I think that the reason that I'm that I'm open and excited to it is the fact that I can look back on the source material and go, okay, this wasn't really all that good, or rather, it turns out that it, it it doesn't it doesn't hold up very well. Like you know, at the time, there was nothing else really like it, and you know, on American television, and you know, there was value to you know to what they were doing with it. Like I you know, even though it was it was it could be kind of preachy at times. Like you know, the original Power Rangers like. It, I, it legitimately inspired a lot of people, you know, to get into martial arts and to, you know, try to be better people and to help others, et cetera. And that's good. You know, like for, for its entertainment value, I can look back and say like, wow, like it's, it, you know, maybe there's like scenes that are, that still kind of hold up or like, you know, I know people still kind of enjoy the, you know, the Green Ranger arc or whatever, but, but on the whole, like as just like a storytelling, like purely like just the media itself, it, it's not really that good. It doesn't really hold up that well you know, compared to other stuff from that same kind of era. Um, that doesn't devalue it. That doesn't mean like, oh, like, fuck it, whatever. Like, it shouldn't, you know, be treated with so much whatever. No, not at all. Like, it, it's, it, it is a huge franchise that is fully established. Uh, so if anything, actually, again, this, this new Power Rangers movie is kind of in the same line as uh, the examples like with Dragon Ball Super and the new Yu-Gi-Oh! movie, the new Pokemon uh, Origins and all that stuff, you know, um, where it's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a, con a consistently... Uh, you know, it's, it's a franchise that has still been here for a long time, but in, in that case, it is completely, it, at, at least from the information that we have about it, it's making me excited that it doesn't seem like it's trying to be like the original 
source material that much, it seems like it's trying to be a better, more interesting version than it. Uh, now, cases, and that first of all, that's that's completely like my perception of it, and that could completely change when the movie comes out. In which case, you know, obviously, I'll 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 be happy to eat my words if that's the case. Um, but in that in that specific case, I think because I can look back and say, yeah, that wasn't that good. Oh, but this could be really good, and this could take the concept of it and do something a lot better with it than it was in its original form. That's exciting to me. I'm interested, so I'm going to go see this new movie. And again, tapered in with that, uh, you know, outlook is the fact that like it, it, it comes off to me like it's it's it comes off to me like so far that it's not trying to, uh, you know, it's not trying to necessarily, I don't know. It, it's hard to describe, but you know what? Okay, it, it, it comes off like it's more balanced in terms of both drawing new people in that have never experienced before and also appealing to at least in, in from my sensibilities, uh, you know, seeing, oh, this, this new interpretation. Hey, this could be interesting. Um, you know, and again, that's a very, very rare example because, uh, you know, I can look at other cases where it's like, well, if the, and, and actually, you know what, I could, you could even make this argument for the Power Rangers movie and something else that I'm going to use in a bit that regards myself is, well, if it's so different, then why bother having it be a remake in the first place? And obviously the answer to that is, oh, but, you know, we can catch the attention of people if we use this pre-existing name. Um, oh, actually, you know what? Here, Skylanders. Everybody was so fucking aggravated about Skylanders having Spyro's Adventure as the subtitle for the first game in that series, which now became this massive franchise. Uh, and, you know, but people were aggravated because this isn't a fucking Spyro game. It's like, no, it's not. Spyro is a character that, it, that happens to be in it who fucking cares. And, and Cinder as well from the later Spyro games. But, but that, it, it wasn't a Spyro game. It was its own separate thing and they were just using Spyro. And the funny thing is, as far as I know, I don't think that Spyro being in the first game, like... I don't think anybody who was playing Skylanders gave a fuck, you know, which again, in that case was the kids who were interested in it and buying the toys and collecting the toys and playing the game. And Spyro just happened to be a character in it that for all we know, very likely wasn't a character that they recognized from the previous games that he originated from. Because I think by the time that Skylanders came out, I don't, I don't even think that there had been a Spyro game for like at least a few years by that point. I think they stopped like the the kind of like semi-reboot of that franchise with like Elijah Wood as the voice of the character or whatever it was. I, I didn't follow Spyro expensively, so I have no idea. But but yeah, like in that case, it's like, oh, it wasn't even because of that. It's like, who gives a shit? So if anything, that was kind of like an almost, you know, unnecessary. It, it seemed like it was an unnecessary, like, you know, let's slap this character's name. Oh, nobody cares. People just like Skylanders for what it is because it is not a Spyro game. It is its own thing that has now firmly established itself as a huge franchise. Now, I'm going to use myself as an example, and I'm going, to, I'm going to out myself with this. So when I was first thinking about doing Tome, as, a, as actually, when at the time, it was going to be as a game, um, because I wanted to do uh, the original TDA as a game first. Again, that, that didn't happen. I learned Flash, and I was doing animation instead. That's a whole story that I've told a million times. Uh, but when I was thinking about just reviving that, IP in the first place, and it had been like four or five years, I think, since the original TTA had had you know stopped, not ended, because I just I didn't end it, I stopped it, um, much to everybody's dismay. Uh, so when I was laying out, and you know, again, without spoiling too much, I laid out most of the twists with that new version of like you know what certain characters like secret identities were, and like the twists with them and everything. Um, I laid out the the basic groundwork for most of the story ahead of time um, in terms of like how many episodes I was going to do and what was going to happen in each episode, which characters were going to show up during which. And I used the original TTA basically as a blueprint for going about doing it. Um, now, and as far as that roadmap goes, you know, I guess not getting super spoilery, but you know, if you've, whether you've seen the show or not, it's, you know, establishing the characters, fighting back against the hackers who were causing problems, you know, the presence of the forbidden power virus thing, you know, the tournament happening, the time leading up to the tournament, the tournament itself happening, uh, the big battle with certain key characters that came after that. And then what, what then became season two was a lot of new material and also like kind of like a, like a cross between what was the second and third season of the original TTA kind of crossed together with like a lot of new stuff. Um, now, 
I always went in in terms of like writing and, and executing everything. I went into it completely like, like more or less as appealing to a whole new audience. There were specific moments, obviously, where I had little, you know, throwbacks to the original TTA, but there were very, very minor kind of things in terms of like, like direct references. And the biggest thing was I, I actually tried to make a certain character look like they were going to end up going in the exact same path as they did as the original. And then it turned out, oh, no, it wasn't. That was actually kind of the throw some people off who were thinking that because that, oh, I've seen the original version. He's following the same blueprint and blah, 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 whatever. And then as it turned out, a lot of the paths of uh, the character development and, and arcs and everything went completely differently, like like day and night, mostly because of just how much, uh, you know, ho hopefully better I had gotten in all that time since I did the original version of it. But here's the point that I'm making against myself um, is I didn't necessarily have to follow the general roadmap of the original TTA in terms of the story progression at all. I could have obviously had the same characters and continued to do my own new kind of, it, like what I perceived as not even necessarily reinterpretations, but really just better like updates of the characters. Like if anything, I, I saw most of them as just like, hey, these are like, you know, upgrades. These are, these are just me trying this again and doing it a lot better this time because now I have a lot more experience in storytelling and writing and animating and et cetera. But, you know, that's how I proceed it specifically that, you know, it still is a reboot, reimagining, retelling kind of thing, you know? Uh, I can't deny that that is exactly what it is. But, you know, that, that's, that's a point that could totally be made against me. And if anything, it, it, it's, it's also perfectly, you know, easy to, to argue that it might have been a weakness of the story as a whole for me to follow that blueprint in the first place because, you know, that might have been me limiting myself. And I've thought about, you know, if if there were ever to be, like, a totally new, in, like, interpretation of, of Tome, like, from the ground up, not a continuation of the show as it is, uh, but if it was something else, like, you know, if it was, say, a game or, or otherwise, uh, then in that case, I would really want to have it be like a whole new like like in in terms of the the plot progression like not the same shit as it was in TTA and then Tome um because then especially I feel like it's just oh like you're just doing this again 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 um you know and and that's one of the things that's that's really difficult too as I think about that that's that's why like I don't I don't always necessarily blame the people in the creative positions of having to make these reboots and reimaginings because I know that finding that balance of, you know, because of, of what people might be expecting, it's, if anything, it's, you know, this could be a whole topic in and of itself. I would argue that's part of the reason why Sonic is, Sonic the Hedgehog games are so fucking all over the place is because it's like, I, 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 think, I think that's exactly what it is where often it's like, there's the struggle of, oh, we want to do something new. You know, even Sonic Boom is a perfect fucking example of like, <laughs> pardon me is like, oh, we want to do something completely new with this franchise and do like this, this kind of separate spinoff IP. But Sega's like, we want you to make it, you know, still in line with and, and, you know, like recognizable to the source material. And it also has to have like certain elements of the gameplay that people would come to expect from a Sonic game. And it's like, oh, okay, well, you know, and then there's also the added, you know, thing of like, oh, well, we're not really that experienced in making that type of game, a speed game, and that's really difficult. And look at how long it took for the people that created Sonic originally to get that down. You know, I would argue it wasn't even necessarily until like colors or generations, but and again, that's a, that's a whole other topic. I don't want to get into that. Um, but it's the same kind of like, like struggle. It's the same, like, you know, being pulled, you know, by both, by different, you know, people on both arms from different sides. Like, I, I don't, I don't know what to give you. I don't know what to give you shit. You know, it's, it's difficult to kind of strike that balance and find something that works. The, you know, okay, now the, the kind of like go-to easy answer for this is, you know, making something completely new from the ground up that is inspired by, you know, oh, this thing or whatever. Now, you know, as a creator, I like that more when that's the case. And actually, I think that that's this – is, this is a little bit off topic, but I think this is still a point worth making. I think that when – Going back to the bit about, you know, like, like an established franchise. Actually, you know what, here, a bit about, I'll, I'll use Pokemon as an example. Um, when I see people who are bored with Pokemon, 
uh, and like they're not really excited about, oh, like Sun and Moon, eh, whatever, it's just the same game. It's like, that's fair. That's perfectly fair. Yes, it is very often the same, uh, you know, layout of you fight the HM leaders, you fight whatever the evil team is, you fight the Elite Four, and then you just have fun and do all the side quests and you can play against your friends and et cetera. Yeah, it's the same layout every time. Uh, same thing with a lot of established franchises. And, you know, obviously with each new installment, they, they do attempt to add in new elements and new gameplay types and new interesting things that they can kind of do. And, you know, that can also be a recipe for greater success or sometimes a recipe for making people upset that it's not like what they were expecting and it's like, you know, not as good or whatever. You know, again, that's a different subject. But my point is, I think that when people get to a point of where they're sick of, not like, oh, it's, it's not as good as it used to be. It's, I'm sick of this. Like, oh, I don't, I don't, I don't want to play this anymore. I think it's because, or, or, or when, when they, you know, in fact, even the, the opposite of, oh, it's not as good as it used to be. It's, I wish that they would do something totally different with this IP, with this series, with this whatever. Like, you know, I, I've uh, actually, Mike Lucas has brought up, like, I, I think it would be cool if Pokemon did like a totally different, uh, battle system, and I'm like, they're never going to do that. They're never going to do that for the main series games. For a spinoff, absolutely. You know, Pokken was, you know, I think what a lot of people probably wanted Pokemon Stadium to be when it was first announced. Um, you know, uh, they, they wanted it to be, if, if not an RPG, like like a, like a 3D console RPG Pokemon game. I think a lot of people wanted it to be a game where you control your Pokemon in 3D space and run around and you can do different moves and shit. Um, and Pokken is the closest thing, I think, to that as a game. Um, but as far as the main games go, it's like, no, of course they're not going to, you know, stop it from, <laughs> they're not going to change it from, from the core gameplay mechanics of it's a turn-based RPG where you can collect and fill, build whatever team you want with whatever moves you want that they can have, etc. Because that's what a Pokemon game is, you know, like at its core, that, that's what the mainline series of Pokemon games are. But sorry, I keep getting off, kind of off topic from this off topic subject is I think that when, when people get to a point where it's like, I'm done, I, I, you know, unless they do something totally different, pardon me, um, then, I, then I'm, I'm done with this franchise. That's perfectly fine, but I think what the answer to that is, 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 is just you've grown out of it and, you, and your values have changed and you want something different. Um, I think that, you know, like, like in, in the case of a video game specifically, um, because I think that that comes down to like the genre and that video games, it comes down to the what is the enjoyment factor of the game? You know, is it the gameplay itself? Is it the world? Is it the characters? Is it the story? Is it, you know, the, if it, if it is the gameplay, is it, you know, what is it about the gameplay? Is it the exploration? Is it the, you know, the, the, the winning? Is it, is, is it the victory you get? If it's like a, like a fighting game or something, is it, uh, you know, the, the, the strategic aspect that invigorates you? Pardon me, disgusting, gross. Um, I'm getting tired, as you can tell, uh, and making gross noises. Anyway. Um, you know, the, the enjoyment factor, like if, if that's changed and like the enjoyment factor of a long running franchise is no longer giving off the same spark as it used to, then the answer is you're bored and you want something different in which case, okay, well then find another turn-based RPG game or, or, you know, fighting game or whatever that is different and new and has something to it that, you know, that, that the, the series that you were invested into before and now are sick of can maybe offer you that that might be something that would be interesting to you. Give that a shot, you know, but I think that it's easy for people to just like gravitate, even if they, if like they're sick of it or whatever, you know, Sonic again is a great example of this. Like they, they gravitate back and it's like, Oh, like, you know, I mean, again, like this bit about like the, the two new Sonic games actually, where it's like Sonic mania is, I, yeah, this is perfect. Sonic mania is, you know, you could argue, Oh, that's preying on the nostalgia of Genesis fans. Oh, here's just another fucking Genesis. Like, game oh developed by you know, like fans or whatever but it's like but there are people who are like that who gives a shit i'm fucking excited i want to play that game it looks like it looks like it's gonna be awesome oh and it's by people that i trust to make a really fun fucking awesome 2d sonic game cool you know and then you know with with uh uh with the 2017 project if it if at the very bare minimum with the, the little that we know about it if it's another you know uh colors or generation style uh you know really fast kind of game like that uh, you know, that, that's cool. And that's like, okay, that's, that's what we've come to expect now is like, this is what a good 3d Sonic game, you know, as you know, by and large, the opinions are of people, I, I think, and hope to God, um, please, we don't need Sonic Adventure 3 guys. Sorry. Um, but <laughs> that, that's like, okay, cool. Well then we know what to expect. We know what we want. 
or we or we know that, that, that that's going to be something that will be of quality and that will be enjoyable, you know, hopefully. Again, Sonic is a difficult kind of example to use, but I, I think it still kind of applies more or less. So, yeah. Um, so to end this with just, again, answering the question as black and white as I can. Um, I, I am, how I feel towards reboots, reimaginings, stuff like this in this era that we're in. Again, the nostalgia side of it is something like the actual nostalgia feeling is something that I want to delve into in a, in a separate topic, discussion, whatever, later. But um, my feelings towards those kind of things are not entirely negative. Um, they are typically really only negative when, uh, when, when they come off to me as they don't know what they want to be, they don't know which side they're catering to more, that, that they're unbalanced in terms of the new generation and the old nostalgic generation of whatever it is a reboot, reimagining, revival of. Um, but otherwise, I, I am, am, while I am open to and, and can be, in, in certain cases, excited about the prospect of uh, you know, one of those kinds of things. What I prefer is, you know, to see something like, oh, cool, this is like a spiritual successor or a re reimagining in, in terms of it's, a, it's in a new IP that is very much inspired by blank that, you know, has been either gone or dead or whatever. I mean, hell, okay, actually, this is, this is a great example too. Um, I love Dragon Ball, right? But One Piece is totally inspired by Dragon Ball in a lot of like very core concept kind of ways. And I can object, even, even though I'm, I'm even like, I'm a bigger Dragon Ball fan than I am a One Piece fan, I can look at One Piece objectively and say One Piece is better than Dragon Ball, like on the whole. Um, like Preparation Age. <laughs> Good job, Chris. Going for 50 minutes. I'm getting really hazy here. Help me out. Um, stay with me. Yeah, like One Piece is, and, and lots of other Shonen Jump series and probably beyond that too, very much inspired by Dragon Ball Z. Uh, and, and One Piece, I think, is better, like, overall than Dragon Ball, like, the franchise. Uh, you know, and, and they're running at the same time. They're both established franchises that are here at the same time. Like, Dragon Ball isn't dead in the water uh, One Piece is, is, and Dragon Ball are both like side by, I mean, I mean for fuck's sake, they, they've crossed over. Um, but yeah, my, my point is typically if it's something like, oh, this is new and it's, oh, it's, I can tell this is inspired by this other thing, you know, whether I have experienced that other thing before or not. Uh, I think just like new and original ideas are what are more, and you know what? I think the other thing is even if, if, you know, even if they don't do as well, if they're not always as successful, because it is, it can be difficult to get something new off the ground, especially when it comes to the internet, but even in, in just like, you know, the mainstream media in general, it is difficult to get people to give a shit about a completely new IP. Um, but I think that actually, I think that even if people don't know it or they don't know how to describe it or, they, or they're not like fully aware of it, I think that people are more enthusiastic about a new thing, a new thing that is in the vein of something that they've already liked and experienced and grew up with, and that is better. Uh, I think that, that you know, and, and there are exceptions, obviously. I think that there are people, excuse me, that are, you know, just hate everything new uh, and, you know, just only are blinded by nostalgia. Thankfully, those people are pretty rare by and large, but, yeah, I think those things are exciting to people in general and that, um, you know, there's, that is what, leads to like, oh, this is, this is the thing that I'm into now. Like, oh, this, this is, this is totally like this great amalgamation and like, or, or like, a, like an amalgamation of, of different things in different ways executed together in one like really cool new kind of package with a new coat of paint on it. Uh, or like, um, you know, something that, that that's like a, like, like a subversion. I mean, like, like while I'm watching One Punch Man, I'm only a couple episodes into One Punch Man at the time that I'm recording this, but it's, I think that the big reason why people like that so much, like I can tell is because it's very like, it's subverting a lot of tropes in, you know, in typical anime and manga. Uh, same thing like with Kill a Kill, I think was very subversive in that kind of way. Um, you know, stuff like that. And, and, and like, yeah, so I don't know. I, I think that, I think that that's the case and just not everybody always like necessarily knows that or is aware of that or can describe that. But like that, that's something that's kind of like underlying with, what they seek in media, you know, there's that good point about like in that game theory about, uh, like, um, uh, about, about like, like, you know, gamers don't know what they want. And I think that, I think that that is true as well. I think that it, cause it's hard for people to like grasp and describe, and they're not, you know, required to describe that necessarily. 
And I think that because of that, I think that it's so easy to just be like, oh, well, if we go with something safe that already exists, uh, you know, that they might have some level of familiarization with, and that's fine. That works, whatever. We'll just go with a new thing of that, you know, uh, whether it's something that's already been consistently established for a long time, or if it's something that hasn't been around for a long time and they feel, oh, but we think the new generation, if we just do some tweaks to it uh, and hopefully do it right, because we, you know, aim to do that. And I don't think anybody ever aims to make a shitty, a purposefully shitty reboot of something, really, as far as I know. I hope to God not. Um, then, like, oh, then, then we can we can introduce this to a whole new audience and hopefully even get, you know, people who grew up with the original to enjoy it as well. That's that's always what the goal is. And it's just it, it depends on the final product to get the results that they are looking for. So, yeah, um, that was an hour of my thoughts and how I feel about those things. Um, I hope that that was somewhat interesting and at all <laughs> for going on for a fucking hour. I just hit the button and was waiting to see how this went. But yeah. Um, so that's it. Uh, but thanks for listening. I hope that this is somewhat interesting and enjoyable at all. But uh, I guess in the comments below, um, what do you think? <laughs> um, if you want to give specific examples uh, that, you know, like unlike ones that I avoided trying to use, um, please go for it. Uh, let me know your thoughts about this same kind of subject. I'm curious. I mean, you know, I you know what the topic is by the description and the hour that I've just spent describing it to you. So let me know what you think. Tell me some stories. Give me some other, maybe some other examples that I didn't mention uh, or implied or whatever. Uh, and yeah, that's it. And if you have future Kerbalod topic suggestions related to this or otherwise, uh, you know, maybe as an extension of this topic, uh, leave a comment about that too. I don't know when I'll be doing the kind of sequel to this one about nostalgia. Um, you know, I'll see what happens with that. But uh, looking forward to that because I definitely want to do that at some point. And uh, that's about it. So, yeah. Uh, thanks, and I'll uh, catch you all later. Have a lovely week, weekend, whenever this one comes out. I don't know, but have a good whatever that is. Bye. <laughs>